Is pulsing and red light therapy products beneficial or something we should avoid? Let's find out. What exactly is pulsing? Pulsing is defined as fleeting peaks of light when emitted from a red light therapy device. So at different intervals of time, there is either light emitted or light not. Continuous exposure, on the other hand, is the opposite. That simply has light shining at all times. Think of that strobing effect you see in nightclubs. That is simply pulsing. When I first started reviewing red light therapy devices back in 2018, pulsing wasn't a thing. In fact, any form of light pulsing was actually seen as a bad thing. This was because of inferior LEDs, inferior design. It meant they weren't emitting a continuous source of light. It was definitely a bug and not a feature. In fact, it was something I was actually testing for and telling people, look, they may want to avoid this product because of this issue. I'll put a lot of resources and articles I mentioned in, in this video below, including our deep dive blog article on red light therapy pulsing. That article will go into a lot more detail than this video will. So if you really want to take a deep, deep dive, check that out as well. So why all of a sudden has pulsing become a big thing in the red light therapy space? Well, Juve, one of the biggest red light therapy companies, released their second gen Juve solo panel. And this panel incorporated pulsing. Now it was only pulsing for the near infrared invisible light, and it was at a fixed rate of 10 Hertz. Juve claimed that this pulsing function would help with recovery, sport injury, repair, and that's how they marketed it. But competitors to Juve came out saying, look, it's totally a marketing play. It's purely a gimmick and it's just a way to justify the overpriced panel. But what's interesting, fast forward a couple of years and we're now seeing more and more companies coming out with pulsing. Not only do they use the same 10 Hertz pulsing that you've used, some of these companies are offering pulsing technologies from one Hertz right through to 9,999 Hertz. There are lots of options. And again, it's not just with near infrared, it's also with red light, which to be honest, seeing a pulsing red light, kind of stressful and not that enjoyable. Before we look at what the science says, there's a few other things I need to point out about pulsing. As I just mentioned, there's a lot of different rates of pulsing. It's not just a black and white, does it pulse, yes or no. There's also how often it pulses, the pulsing frequency, which is measured in Hertz. Of course, this makes our lives even more trickier because if a study does show that pulsing at say 10 Hertz is effective, that doesn't necessarily mean that pulsing at 100 hertz is just as effective. In fact, it may even make things worse. Next, we're talking about red light therapy here. So we know there's lots of different wavelengths. You've got your 630s, your 660s, your 810s, your 850 nanometers. When we talk about pulsing, we're talking about pulse light, not pulse light at a particular wavelength. So again, we may find that pulsing at this hertz at this wavelength is beneficial, but that doesn't mean that the same pulsing rate at a different wavelength is beneficial. Another thing to note is that pulsing is going to mean you're receiving less energy, less joules of light on the body. Think about it. Pulsing is literally the flickering the on and the off of a light. So if you have two identical panels, one with pulsing enabled, the other without, and you stand in front of each of them for 10 minutes at a time, the panel that's not pulsing is going to emit more light more energy. So if you are using a panel with pulsing, you've got to factor that into your dosing calculations as well. Because remember, for some portion of time, that light is actually turned off. Finally, a lot of the studies on pulsing are using medical grade, high radiance lasers. Now, at the end of the day, light is light, but it is important to keep this in consideration. Often these lasers are applied directly on the body and are putting out a particular wavelength. The point I'm trying to make with all of this is there are a lot of variables. And also, as we're about to find out, a lot of unknowns when it comes to pulsing. Hey, look, I typically spend a lot of time and money reviewing red light therapy products, but if you're enjoying these educational videos, I really appreciate if you can give me a like. It'll show me that the time and energy I spend researching these topics is worthwhile. And of course, if you want to see more videos like this, be sure to hit the subscribe button as well. Okay, so now that we've got a foundational knowledge of pulsing, what exactly does the science say? So after taking a rather deep dive, yes, it is clear that there are some benefits to pulse red light. And there are also some mechanisms where pulsed red light can impact the body. So let's go through some of these points. First up, pulsing does allow you to use higher radiances, higher power outputs. In turn, this allows the light to reach deeper into the body. The idea here is that the pulse light allows the body tissue to remain cooler. Effectively, you're giving it a chance to cool down between each pulse. So if you were wanting that light to penetrate deeper into the tissue, pulsing could be beneficial. You could stand closer to a panel, enable the pulsing function, and know that you're, there's less risk of overheating the tissue. But it's important to note that the studies that looked at this are using extremely high irradiance figures. We're talking 
uh, two watts over centimeter squared, which is 10 to 20 times more powerful than the panels we have on the market today. So one could argue that pulsing is not really needed given that the power intensities are so much lower. And if you're aware of your dosing, you can still get a deep penetration without doing thermal damage to the tissue. Next up, we see that many studies do in fact show that pulse light does create a different outcome on the body compared to continuous light. But the reasons behind it aren't quite clear and the science is a little bit unpredictable. Some studies showed a benefit, some studies showed a negative impact. So it's kind of too early to come out and make a blanket statement saying it should or shouldn't be used. I should also mention that a lot of these studies are animal studies or they're very, very small human studies. Some human studies are actually case studies looking at one individual and other studies are looking at very specific health issues as well. So yes, a lot of studies did show that pulse light was creating a better outcome compared to continuous light but not all some with the other way around but we also need to remember that continuous light therapy your typical red light and infrared light therapy is well known to be beneficial for a lot of the uh, issues that were researched as well next we know that pulse light can also be a stressor i talked about this earlier with light flicker anyone that sat in an office with a light that's flickering away knows how stressful it can be but research shows that even flickering light we don't pick up like we visually can't see it can have a stressful impact on the body this can lead to things such such as eye fatigue, headaches, migraines, or even seizures. What about entrainment? Researchers have also written that pulsing light frequencies may align with the frequencies used in human biology, although this mechanism is somewhat speculative. Brain waves, for instance, occur at different frequencies. You have your alpha state between 4 and 13 hertz, your beta state between 14 and 40 hertz, and your delta state between 1 and 3 hertz. By matching the hertz frequencies of a red light therapy device with the brain waves, Theoretically, there could be a biological effect. More research is needed though in regards to red light therapy. For instance, delta waves are produced when we're in a deep sleep state. The thought goes that pulsing light at this frequency may help keep one in a deep sleep state for longer or even induce them into a deeper sleep state. But again, more research is needed and we're moving away slightly from red light therapy here because researchers are also using auditory signals to help entrain brainwave states is not necessarily something that's unique or specific to red light or near infrared light pulsed light. What about brain health? Well, there's devices out there such as the Violite or the Neuro Ink, which are very popular in the brain health community. Some people have seen amazing changes after using these devices. We typically see great results from people suffering from things such as dementia and Alzheimer's, but they're also often used to help people get into a more focused or aware state. And yes, these devices are red light therapy devices, but they're also using pulsed light. Now again, we need to think back to an entrainment here. One school of thought is that the pulsed light is actually having an entrainment effect on the brain, but we also know that red light and near-infrared light does have an anti-inflammatory effect. And maybe the pulsing is helping that light penetrate deeper into the body, into the brain, and in turn help with the brain inflammatory issues or any brain cell trauma. We know that red light therapy can help with tissue inflammation, and help speed up the body's natural repair processes. So maybe these devices benefit from both mechanisms, entrainment, but also boosting ATP and helping with anti-inflammatory issues. Again though, a lot of people swear by these products. There's also a lot of research and papers showing that they are beneficial. I'm gonna be doing more reviews and testing and also interviews with these companies. So if brain health is a focus of yours, again, be sure to subscribe. Overall though, given the lack of things we don't know, I think it's too hard to come out and say that yes, pulsing is an absolute game changer and everyone must use it. Yes, there are research papers out there showing that it does help and it does help faster and better than continuous light therapy, but there's so many things we don't know. And even if it was clear cut that it was helping say 10 or 20 or 30% better, I don't even know what the recommended protocol would be because these studies are so sparse and so unique that it's hard to then carry that over to how you should use a panel and what pulsing setting you should use on that panel. Really, it's important to remember that you're gonna get a benefit from continuous light. That is well known, it's easy to use. Yes, there are still a lot of variables, but trying to add pulsing to it and trying to determine exactly what rate of pulsing, what wavelengths you need to pulse, what duration, what intensity, what distance, frequency it really really does get confusing effectively you're just guessing and in turn you're over complicating something that is already quite complex for those reasons why i personally don't bother with pulsing i've got 
access to a lot of panels and some of these panels have lots of pulsing options literally one hertz through to 10,000 any wavelength i want but i wouldn't know where to start yes you might read a paper saying that this particular pulsing rate shined on this area of the brain helped with this condition but that doesn't mean i want 600 leds pulsing flat out for 10 minutes at that hertz my final point is that yes there is something to pulsing there's something here it, it does show benefit people are getting great results from it especially with brain health and the science is interesting to show that more research should continue down this path but it's just too hard to know how to apply it and for that reason i'm going to say that most of the panels out there that incorporate pulsing technology are coming at this from a marketing play it's another feature on the product's website it's another standout, it's another differentiating factor when compared to some of the bigger companies that don't use Pulsing. But again, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It just makes matters more complex. If you are someone who does want to geek out on the science and maybe has a particular health issue and has found that there is research showing Pulse Light at that research can help, then by all means, grab a panel that's got Pulsing, use it. I'd love to hear how you go. The most important thing to remember though is all of these panels that offer pulsing have the option to disable it. So if you really like a panel and it has pulsing in it, don't see that as a negative. You don't have to use it. I also need to point out that I have been experimenting with brain health pulsing. These are some helmets I'm testing, the V-Light I mentioned earlier. This is one area where you may want a device that does incorporate pulsing. Okay, so if you've watched all of this and you're thinking, all right, there's enough out there that I want to give it a go. Where should I start? What panel should I go for? Well, check out this video. In this video, I review the Infrared Flex. Now, this panel has built-in pulsing modes, and it also puts out a ton of power across a bunch of wavelengths. I think you'll be quite impressed with that panel, and if pulsing is something you want to incorporate into your red light therapy routine, definitely check that video out.